We're coming to you live from Portugal, talking about everything we've seen and learned from our time here. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. Before we hop into the episode, I just wanted to give everyone a heads up that this was recorded with Facebook Live and there are a couple of streaming blips along the way. So we apologize in advance that the audio is not quite the same level that it normally is, but it's still a packed episode full of lots of great information if you're planning a trip to Portugal. So stay tuned. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hey. <laughs> It's Kim and Tara. We're here with Vacation Mavens, and we are gonna. We're coming to you live from Portugal. Can you believe it? Yeah. Instead of on um, just in your ears. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do end up listening to this in your ears as a podcast, just know that there is a video of it that we will be uploading to a YouTube channel that we can put a link in our show notes in case you want to see the awkwardness that we're going to try to avoid on this couch. <laughs> You'll see why we usually do this as audience. Yeah. I feel pretty proud because it's 5 p.m. here in Lisbon right now. So, you know, we look pretty together. We've already had a full day of sightseeing. So, and got rained on a few times. We have gotten a little bit of rain. So that's definitely something to discuss later on, maybe. Yeah. Because we started out with beautiful weather. Yeah. And in the grand scheme of things, Lisbon definitely, I think, has... A very moderate climate, um, but on the warm side, I would say moderate to warm, right? I looked up in the summer, I think they get to, um, you know, in the in the good 70s, 80s, upwards 90s. So um, it definitely can get warm here in the summer. But right now we're experiencing weather that's in the 60s with some rain occasionally. So should we explain why we're in Portugal together? I think we should, yeah. <laughs> it, it did come kind of, we, we hinted at it a few times on a few episodes, but definitely we should chat. We did. So we were invited by Martin Hall, which is Martin Hall Family Resorts. They really have kind of pioneered the idea of a family resort in, in Portugal. And they, are, they did a conference, a luxury family conference on Friday. And they invited us to come over experience a couple of their hotels and enjoy the conference, which was really a lot of like women entrepreneurs talking yeah. about like work-life balance. We know how easy that is, <laughs> breaking the glass ceiling, <laughs> you know, things like that. So it was, um, you know, just a one-day conference, but really we had a chance to also experience the destinations and the hotels. Yeah, definitely. And so you guys know Martin Hall. So it was actually, it's founded by a couple, but it sounds primarily like definitely spearheaded by a female entrepreneur. Her name was Chitra Stern. And uh, they had this envision that they had their own family of four and they did some real estate and decided there weren't really any hotel chains that were totally targeted towards families. So they started Martin Hall and there's actually four properties. I'll kind of, for those of you on video, we'll show a little video, but we have stayed at the Kashkish property, which is more, um, beachfront, not too far from Lisbon, about 35 minutes away. It's not quite a beachfront. Like, yeah, it's not, not true. Sorry. It's not like it's a, it's a seaside. It's a yeah, seaside town. It's a seaside yeah. town and it has very much that vibe. Mm -hmm. um, the property is a little bit off the beach, but you can definitely take a walk to the sea or you can ride uh, bikes to the beach, which is what I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it still has that seaside vibe, but it's also a resort with like lots of, we'll, we'll get into the hotel. Yeah, we can get into yeah. a little more. So we traveled. I actually, uh, because to get to Europe being from Seattle, I had to fly from Seattle over to Boston to connect with Tamara. Yes, and that, so it was kind of cool to yeah. be in the Boston airport and get to see Kim. We had to fly over together because TAP Airlines, or is it the TAP? They would say yeah. yeah. TAP, and I've always called it TAP. I but it's the, you know, the national carrier. Um, they flew us over, and so there's direct flights from Boston, also from JFK and Newark and a couple. Of, so definitely if you're in the Northeast, it's very easy to go yeah. direct. I do believe they have a California direct as well, I think. I'm pretty sure. So I don't know what city in California, but I remember yeah. what I was researching. So it's good. You know, I've had some questions about TAP um, because we've looked at it before to, you know, for flying over and it's generally pretty affordable. Yeah. But it's not a budget airline. 
No, not at all. I, yeah, I wouldn't say that at all. But when I was looking up just to price out the flight that we were on, actually, I researched it like two or three days before we were flying. And it was coming up as 367 one way. Yeah. So okay. it's affordable, but yet that include we had checked baggage, no issue. We did get to choose our seats. Mm -hmm. We had boarding passes that we could print in advance, all of that. Yeah. And, and checked bags, there was, there was an extra fee. Were there? I don't know. I can't. I think there that. was. Yeah, we we did carry on only. Yay! <laughs> but we um we had two meals. Well, yeah, a meal and a snack, right? Yeah. And breakfast, kind of snack. And there were movies the whole time. There were also games. I even took a picture of it because there's like an interactive thing for kids. Did yeah. you see that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was a whole little system there. And they do that. They do if you want to stop in Portugal for a little bit and then continue on to somewhere else in Europe. They do have a stopover program, which is a lot like like Iceland Air yeah. does. And so you can stay, I had to look it up, but it was either up to seven days or five days. In yeah, Lisbon. right. Yeah, they have a short stopover and they actually have an app for it because that's the first time I had heard of that. Mm -hmm. It's called Portugal Stopover and um, it's actually done by tap and it gives you ideas. Like, so if you've got one day in Lisbon right. and there was one other Portugal destination um, it might have been Porto. I can't remember uh, that has it. So, so we got over to Lisbon and we had a pretty quick, we got picked up, the hotel had arranged a transfer. So we got picked up from the hotel and driven to a hotel downtown in Lisbon uh, called the Tivoli. I don't know the full name. Yeah, it's the, and this one we had kind of set up on our own, but the, it was the Tivoli Avenida Liberda because that's right. like the, the, main, the main road that it's on. Um, so this is a luxury family, well, luxury hotel. Um, definitely welcomes families, but is not, you know, family geared the way that Martin all is. Um, but very nice. And we, we shared a room. We got to be, uh, like almost, um, almost in the same bed. Yeah. <laughs> it was like two twin beds right next to each other. So if you are a couple, you can have the two twin beds made into a king. Yeah. Uh, which is nice, but and that's a very common European thing because we had that at Martin Hall at Kashkish as well. Yeah, so. and they and there's Kashkish. a lot of room. At least the, we were in a family suite. Oh, it was really nice. And so there's plenty of room um, to pull out a bed and have. You could have two little ones; they can sleep there, and you can all you know family of four in one room as long as they're small. If they're teens, then you probably would want to get adjoining rooms. Yeah. You know, maybe two standard adjoining rooms. Um, but it was, I really enjoyed the hotel mostly because the service was really phenomenal. Yeah. Um, if you can, I would say if you're in a suite, then you also get access to like the top floor, uh, the restaurant, you get to have breakfast up there versus um, breakfast in, in, the lobby. in the lobby area. And that also gives you access to a lounge that you can use throughout the day where there's a private concierge there and there's, you know, some snacks, snacks and drinks and there was, things. I think there was drinks like wine and champagne even. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I definitely for a few snacks. And the concierge was probably, you know, we don't use concierge often when we've traveled. And this was a perfect example of where that little step where staying in a resort can really pay off versus kind of like the do-it-yourself approach for an Airbnb. Because do you want to share about like our little experience? We needed a photo restaurant, right? Yeah, I mean... They really helped us out in a lot of different ways. We were looking into different food tours and things, but then we wanted to go see Fado, which is um, a Portuguese part of the culture. Um, a I historical think. legacy. It's not as common nowadays. It's yeah. mostly for tourists now, but it, right. there, it historically was... But a it's a form of music, so it's usually one guitar player, two guitar players, one of them playing a Portuguese 12-string guitar, and then either a man or woman singing, and the, the singing is very, it's kind of like opera, but it's very soulful and sad and passionate, so it definitely reminds me a little bit, without the dancing, but of seeing flamenco, flamenco just yeah. because it's, it's so emotional and so powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it truly is, even, uh, it reminded me of Flamenco as well, because I was sitting there, and even I was looking at, um, like, kind of the way the singers would communicate with the guitarists, and they were, you know, deciding what they wanted to sing, so it wasn't as crisp as a performance, like, entertainment, where they knew exactly what they were singing, they would kind of just didn't have, like, so. a set list. Yeah, they didn't yeah. have a set list. So that paid off. And we'd also booked a tour that Tamara was a little worried we hadn't gotten a confirmation on. And so we went to the concierge and he was able to call them and speak fluent Portuguese to kind of get the uh, status of our booking, which I think is a huge yeah, benefit. Very helpful. So that was nice to but, know. But the really impressive thing about this concierge was that I sat down, <laughs> I had not given my name 
And he said, Miss Gruber, and then he knew what room I was in. So yes. it kind of freaked me out, but they're very, very good at their jobs. And yeah. even the front desk staff, the concierge downstairs, I mean. Well, the check-in process uh, was just yeah. amazing. They were very helpful, and they had arranged uh, a room in advance for us. And part of that was because they did know that we were coming in on an overnight flight and um, they were working with us as media. But I think that, you know, it seems like if they can, they will go above and beyond to really help their, their guests. Yeah. Cause I asked, is this, you know, kind of typical experience or just because they knew that we're media and I said, you know, our experience team was really fantastic. So yeah, I think everyone would get that type of uh, treatment, especially if you're in a suite level. Yeah. I think you get that extra level. So, so definitely, definitely a luxury property. Yeah. Definitely love the Tivoli. Yeah. Um, so do you want to talk about the tuk tuk tour? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I guess you've gotten along. Uh, so they booked for us a tuk tuk tour, which is um, kind of like a moped golf cart. Yeah. In a way. Or like a rickshaw, but like that's a rickshaw. Motorized. But yeah, a motorized a rickshaw. rickshaw. And we had an electric one, actually, right? Yeah. Because um, there's a, there are echo, echo friendly ones. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's normally where you have a driver and then you have a front and back facing seat that would fit two. And he had told us that we sat in and he even made us buckle up. He was really concerned about that. Good thing. Good thing. <laughs> Let me just tell you, because the roads here we have learned in Lisbon are very bumpy and quite, um, you know, have a lot of, like, they're just, it's cobblestone. Like cobblestone. I mean, yeah. it's like, it's like cobblestone. And it's Quite hilly. It's, and it's, it's the is the city of seven hills. That, my thighs are getting such a workout. Yeah. <laughs> we walked to lunch today. And, you know, you, you see it and it's up there, but you're out of breath by the time you get there and you feel like you're not too out of shape, but I had to yeah. stretch this morning. Did you? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm, you know, getting old. But, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's a good workout. Yeah. Oh. Definitely be aware. Um, it is hilly. It's not, I mean, we're at a family resort and there's definitely people with strollers, but I would say it's not, I would not want to be in this city with a stroller. No. It yeah. Would be You'd hard. want to be baby wearing or have kids and just take it slow. Yeah. Definitely harder. Yeah. I mean, there, there are ways to get up the hills without climbing. So there are certain places, there are funiculars that go up or that you can take trams, um, that yeah. one place, there's even that one elevator, but that's not really so much for a hill. But yeah, no, that was more of a, really I guess it was a that. hill, but like it walked over on a yeah. bridge. I'm not sure where it went. I think it was more tourism than anything. The funiculars are definitely, you can tell they are aimed to get you up hills, but, but you have yeah, to wait so a long time for them. A long time. And we waited alone just to try and see it going up the hill so we could get a video. And we waited probably 10 minutes and it still hadn't gone. Yeah. So I don't know what <laughs> they the operate on. So yeah, it was like, like, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hi, how are you? Um, so yeah, so that's been the Lisbon, the tip tour. It took us around. So here's my tip. If you do one of these, or if you're new to Lisbon, I think it's a great way to get a feel for, um, so Lisbon is very much like little centers, uh, that have different kind of feels and, um, flavors. And so if you do one of these, definitely make sure you have a city map and have your tip tip driver, kind of mark things and then even if you write in in English what it was if you think you want to go back there because we went around and he showed us so many like great lookouts or mm -hmm. like there's this famous artist here and but I could never get back to it and I wouldn't really know the area even though he said the area the words here you know like you describe one area with three or four words it would always be nice like if you had a highlighter to have a map and then have them circle where you went and also like highlight the route. The route a little bit. Yeah. That would be yeah. good. But I think these things are a good way to get a feel for a city. You know, I agree. Just get Absolutely. There. I mean, I know in Rome, I've had a lot of people do like a golf cart tour. Yeah. You know, and, and when we land in the cities, we do like a little intro to whatever tour or even self guided just to get a feel for the different neighborhoods. So it's not. It's not like you're going to, I mean, you could do it as like Lisbon in a day, but I don't think you're going to really feel like you saw Lisbon. Yeah. It was like, to me, it was more to get an idea of the, the feel of it. And then where do I want to go back and spend more time? I and absolutely agree. walk around that neighborhood. Right. Because, and it'll also give you a heads up because for example, Tamara learned that, um, like she had heard a lot about this district called Alfama and it was supposed to be major area. We hit it with the Tuk Tuk tour and we were kind of, we had planned to go back to it. Uh, we didn't even realize it would be part of the Tuk Tuk tour. But then after being in it on that tour, we realized we didn't really need to go back. Yeah, because we actually, and it's not like you're always in the Tuk Tuk, which is yeah. good. Like you're hopping out. We went into the cathedral. Yes. We went into an old, you know, we went, spent time in an overlook. And then uh, we spent probably 20 to 30 minutes walking around off on that because yeah. you really can't. 
get into yeah. it's, it's a very narrow lots of steps you know so you really can't do the tuck tuck in there so I mean, and I think he was willing to customize it. Yeah, that was a nice you know, thing. Depending on what you're interested in. And you can find them. So we had booked a tour through the hotel. So it was supposed to be a three-hour tour. But along the streets, especially in the popular um, tourism areas, there's tons of the tuk-tuks that are yeah. lined up. And they have signs that say, like, available. So you could even go up to them. And I'm sure you have some negotiation power there and decide, yeah. you know, like, take us here or, you know, take us on a tour and kind of figure out what the time is. And they, they know the popular places. And they always, they also gave us a huge tip, which was great to know, which Tamara has the perfect travel accessory for. And that's something like, I don't remember. Yeah. We have pockets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely look out for pickpockets. Um, apparently, you know, it's just, it's a no problem. It's no problem in a lot of cities, but here in particular. So it's actually, what did they say? I know they said Portugal was the third, most peaceful country in the yeah. world. But somebody else said it was the third safest. I didn't hear safest. I, I on the stats, yeah, on the stats, I saw that it was the most peaceful country in the U EU, and the third most peaceful in the world based on the yeah. global, uh, yeah. whatever that global, like not based on them, but yeah. yeah. So, so you know, the, I don't think you need to feel nervous about other things, but yeah. just always safe. Good to be safe. So I have this. It's, in the other room, but I have this travel on bag that I just got for this trip, and it's a a uh, sling. A sling. So, but you know, a, an, on your back, on your back, crossbody on your back, and yeah. it has little clips that you use to to lock each of the zipper Zip. compartments. So, um, it's really there's no way somebody can get up and like unclip that without you yeah. noticing. Yeah. So. yeah. And I have a sling bag that I love for travel, but it doesn't have a locking zippers. And yeah, you can definitely like, I end up pulling it around in front of me um, when we're traveling, but he was very careful about it. And it's funny because the people he was pointing out that he was tart, he said are pickpockets. They look like a young couple, nice, you know, kind of dressed yeah. like Americans. It's not like these grimy, odd people who don't fit in. And so I think that's what makes it so lethal is you might think they're a part of your tour group or they're just tourists themselves because it's normally tourist areas. And I even heard when we were touring yesterday, one of the like tour guys, yeah. he even warned people as we were entering the lookout. Like, he was, yeah, he pockets. said, he's talking and you could see in his language, but you understood it. So yeah. he was warning all of his tour people to be watching their stuff because he was identifying. And I guess a lot of these tour guys, they, they kind of know what they look like. And yeah. yeah, a lot of times they're young couples that you would never suspect. But I think it was, it was a nice way yeah. to get around on your first day, especially considering we flew overnight. We landed at 6 a.m. We got to the hotel at like 7 a.m. And had breakfast, and then we luckily I was so glad that they had the room ready. But we took like yeah. a little nap and then got up. But you're still kind of tired and you know out of it, so it's just a good way to kind of start off your stay. I think. Yeah, I agree. I think it was great, and it's a it's a fun way to see Lisbon. It is a lot of in and out, just like Tamara said. So um, I'm sure they would customize it, and if you just wanted a driving tour, they could do that. But I will say this isn't a city that you really can drive through. They like, you can, but a lot of the stuff that you want to see, you need to get out and walk, and a lot of it looks similar. So you can drive by the beautiful tiles. So that's the big thing in Portugal, and especially in Lisbon, that we discovered on this tour are these beautiful. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you, if you've seen photos, have the buildings that have the tile work um, all over it, and it's a major major part of Portuguese architecture. Yeah, I love all the different colors. It's nice. And it's funny, I guess there's a, we were just chatting with Amy, uh, and she said there's a, a tile museum. And I have to say, I think that's something I would actually like to do. And yeah. I'll probably do it early in the trip because it's nice if you, we have no to understand it when you recommend it. Yeah, because we have no it. idea. Um, there's all different, like there's blue ones and then there's like all green ones. And it would just be kind of interesting to see if the different colors meant something different. Yeah. Well, so, speaking of colors, yeah. the next day, should we talk about Sintra? Yes. Sintra. So <laughs> one of the things that I really wanted to do was to go up to Sintra, which is about an half an hour outside of Lisbon. So definitely doable as a day trip. Um, although yeah. I would give yourself a full day because That's there's a lot to see there. You, you've probably seen pictures of the Penna Palace, which is at the very top of the hill. So this is kind of like a, I don't know, like retreat area, but there's all these different palaces. Yeah. Um, I still didn't get a good enough sense of, you know, wh why they're all there. Um, but the Penna Palace is what you've seen. There's a, there's a bright red building, a yellow building. It really looks like a, a fairy tale, um, you know, with the turrets and the little, yeah. you know, typical castle type of 
you know, architecture. Yeah, definitely. I think if you check our Instagram stories, we both have like a Lisbon or Portugal uh, saved story on our profile. So we three travel and stuff suitcase and you can kind of get a feel for what that looked like. So what we're, we're describing there. And so we, Originally, we were planning to take a tour up there, um, but mm-hmm. from Lisbon by Beetle or something yeah. like that. So our plan, which in some ways it's good that it didn't work out that way, mm-hmm. um, but we were going to go up in like a convertible VW Beetle um, and have a tour that way. But it ended up, it's actually really it's chilly really cold up there because you have to climb. You do a ton of switchbacks. Um, yeah, don't drive yourselves in all yeah. honesty. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, like, can take the, you can take a train. Um, you can hire a driver, you can take a tour, uh, but I really wouldn't drive yourself unless you are comfortable driving like very, very narrow, like lots narrow. of switchbacks yeah. and then trying to find a place to park is really challenging because it's, there's I not even imagine. No. And they're doing construction. So some areas were like blocked off in areas. So, and they do have like, they say they have little parking lots, but like, yeah, I know that they would find a spot. Right? Yeah. It was so busy. So luckily, like, we ended up, so that, that tour was canceled the night before because they had trouble with their beetle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so luckily, the hotel set us up with a, a driver, which was a really nice it's way to nice go. It's a nice way to go. It, it might be worth the splurge. Yeah. yeah. It's nice because he also, um, he really knew the traffic. And so we had planned to go, like, up to another, we bought tickets for the Penna Palace and the uh, Moorish mm-hmm. Castle because you can buy a combo ticket. But then um, where we had lunch, we had lunch at a Tivoli in Sintra also. It's the Palacio. It's got it. They're opening. They're getting ready to open a Sintra hotel. So I don't want to call it. It's going to be Tivoli Sintra, but they're reopening it. But this one's called the almost there, almost there. It is the Tivoli Palacio de Cetace, probably, right? Um, Satish, I would bet yeah. Satish. We'll yeah. put it in show notes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but it was a beautiful property. Oh my. I mean, people were coming. So it's actually a palace. Yeah. But it's a historical, um, property that it's a palace that they are allowed to operate a hotel in. Yes. So they don't own it. They operate they the hotel in it's it. Crazy. So it's part crazy. of it is open to the public as um, grounds. Yeah. yeah. So you can go and there's like a little maze in the back and there is a beautiful overlook across the valley. We had lunch there, which was, it was like this oasis, right? It was. I mean, the palace can be kind of crowded. And so so you sit down for lunch at this beautiful, there's like flowers all around. And we're looking at the pool. pool. Yeah. And, you know, lovely, lovely Like limited limited, um, seats also out on that little uh, patio. Mm -hmm. And so to go from being, like, we waited for 10 minutes, I think, to get into the entrance. And then there was a school group. So we were like touring the palace in a line and yeah. it was just a lot of people and a lot of crowds. So to be able to go from that to this lunch calm and quiet. And then we headed from there. So it was a great, we, we didn't share our tips about Penna Palace. No, go Should for it. it. Yeah, definitely. So we talked about it being cold, but cause I started to say it's up high. Um, so definitely you want to bring layers and be prepared. And it's also pretty windy up there. So and I think that's, windy. it was pretty common. So I would definitely be prepared for that. And then we got there and there were some ticket kiosks where you could buy tickets because because it was kind of last minute, we were going to do a tour, yeah. which would include the tickets. We didn't buy them separately yeah. online, which would be it. So go on. I mean, usually I would always go online. Yeah, go online and, and buy them early. <laughs> do that. But if not, there are these ticket kiosks. But we found out you have to have a pin for your credit card. So yeah. if you are an American and you're wanting to use your credit card and it has to have a chip, Mm-hmm. Um, so get a chip credit card, but you have to have a pin. And some, some American credit cards don't even allow pins. They don't even, they don't have yeah. the structure, but some do. You just have, you have to, to set it up. You have to call and set it up beforehand. And, and I've learned recently. She has not one card. Yeah. yeah. That you have to set it up in a, you have to set it up from in the, the United States. States. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't like call from Portugal and say, I'm trying to set it up. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely something to know. So if you're planning on using your credit card at kiosks or things like that. So good news. Thankfully, we had gone over. There was a, a ticket, man, window, ticket, ticket window, window with people. And so they allowed us to use our credit cards um, directly. Yeah. So that, was, that worked out well. And thankfully, Tamara had some euros because that's something this trip kind of all happened really fast for me. And so I hadn't done the research and really thought about getting cash. And I had my uh, Bank of America ATM card and I thought I would just 
previously when I traveled internationally with it, they have partner ATMs. And so I thought, oh, I'll just find one of those and hop over to one because we're going to be in the city center of Lisbon. Surely I'm going to find one. They don't, one, they didn't have really any Portuguese partners. Um, and then two, I learned that Bank of America recently has decided that they own, uh, they, even though you can say like the $5 ATM fee, you still have a 3% transaction fee. So um, there might be a better way or a cheaper way. So look up a, about getting Euro beforehand, and definitely small Euro, because that's where Tamara came in handy because mostly it was for tipping. Yeah. We yeah. So if not, maybe get some change, you know, because yeah. I know when I go to my bank uh, ahead of a trip, which I didn't do this time, but luckily I had some Euro leftover from a recent trip, but this, I'm also Bank of America. So it makes me glad to know this. Because yeah. <laughs> usually I will get to a place and plan on taking out some money. So yeah. I'll, I'll get more Euro ahead of time next time. But you can ask for like certain denominations when you right. go to the bank. Cause I'll say like, well, maybe like two fifties and like a few twenties or something yeah. like that. So you can, you can get some smaller bills if you order it. I always give myself a week. They usually only take about three days to get yeah. it in, but nice. I usually give it at least a week. Yeah. And sometimes you have to go to a larger, um, location. Like your, 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 your small local bank might not do the, it does. It's pretty small. Is it pretty small? Yeah, okay. That's good enough. They probably run it through their local. Yeah. They probably run it that's probably why they take like They're not going to yeah. be able to like give it to you on site. No. They're going to have to order it. It has to get delivered and then yeah. they'll call you and let you know to come. And do they charge you a fee for that? Like there's a trend. Uh, it's just the exchange rate, rate. exchange rate fee. So yeah. it's, actually, sometimes it's good to know there like maybe a small fee. Yeah. Well, it's good to know because banks, you also find different exchange rates. So you might see an exchange rate listed one way that's like you use your credit card, but a bank exchange rate might be a little it's, differently. It's usually sometimes it's a little off, but it's definitely not better than going to it's better than three per, It's better than 3% yeah. or the 5% at the airport. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that, so those are some of our yeah. tips and definitely also a little bit tricky with a stroller because even if there is a bus that takes you from the basically where you buy the tickets up to the palace, but even at an additional fee. Yeah, yeah. it was like three fifty euro. Um, but it's still very, uh, you know, still cobblestones and very bumpy. So it it'd still be a little bit tough with the stroller. Yeah. And what I would say also is that you can buy a ticket for the park and the palace, or just the park. And I think if you have little kids. Just buy the ticket for the park. Absolutely. Because it's so fun to climb up on the castle and see the beautiful views and just see the castle. And that's kind of the grounds of the park. Um, but where you have to have the ticket for the palace is to go inside and view the rooms. So if you're someone that really likes to visit castles and manor houses and things like that, and you, you want to see how like life used to be <laughs> and that kind of thing, then you'll enjoy the palace. But it, between the crowd... You know, I think it would be a tough one for, for little kids. I mean, I was ready to get out of there because of the crowd because you're yeah. kind of like shuffling along. Yeah. yeah, I definitely don't. If you see a school group, just wait and don't, yeah. get, behind <laughs> don't get behind them because they kind of group up and it slows, it slows everything, down. everything down. And I would say like it's hard to believe because uh, they make it seem like the park and the palace. And so you think that you won't even get a walk in the palace grounds, mm -hmm. but you really do like you're you enter the like drawbridge and you go around and you get to stand on like turrets and um get great overlooks so uh it sounds like you can't even get near the palace and you're just in the gardens yeah but that's not true so it's just to go inside like tamara said to see the rooms and the and some of the bedrooms are amazing i mean there is some cool stuff yeah. but overall it's just um, like a fancy manor house. So. I'm just looking at the name of the, the next place that we went to after lunch. <laughs> yeah. Because so this after was that, really we went cool. to lunch at the Tivoli, like we mentioned. And then after that, our dry, as I said, our driver, we were going to go to the Moorish Castle, but we needed to be back for a dinner reservation. So our driver said, that's going to take too long. You should go to this place instead. And we had gone, oh, yeah, we've heard somebody's mentioned that. Yeah. Okay, let's go there. And thank you, everyone, by the way, on yeah. Instagram that gave me tips because they've actually helped a lot this trip. So but we went to the Quinta de Regular, Regular, Regalera, 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 I think. So. And it is, I mean, I put on my Instagram, it's a fantasy fan because it really does. And it's, if you like, if you like Gaudi in um, Barcelona, yes. you will definitely love this place because it has this very, you know, um, it's fantastic, like, like mythical, fantastic, like romanticism. Yeah. romanticism. It's, it's, so he was a, uh, he wasn't a prince or anything like royal. He was just an architect and he was a like garden designer. Basically he was a designer of land <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he created a mansion there that is just unbelievable. And so you, at first, just walking, the, this is one of those where you just walk the grounds and it's crazy. And kids would 
love it. Yes, absolutely love it because it's like it's just like something out of a fairy tale in yeah. a way, but in a different way than, than Pen and Palace, just in a way like everything's so green and lush and there are these different paths and you're like, what's going to be down here? Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. It's really um, foresty feeling, almost like enchanted garden. Yes. Like yeah. little bridges or little walkways. And so we came upon one of these, we were walking and there was this pond and there was these stepping rocks and we saw people walking on the stepping rocks and we found this bridge that crossed over a waterfall. And we saw it and we're like, well, how do you get to the stepping rocks? And thankfully, we found some fellow Americans who gave us a little tip. They might have been Brits. I don't know. But we made our way up one thing and we learned, you know, like, yeah, so go to the top to the well. It's like initiation well. well. Yeah. Initiation well. Was. Yeah. So they said, go, just keep going up. And so we went to this thing called the initiation well, which almost seems like a pillar a spiral into staircase the pillar in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we came in from the top and we're like, that must be it. And from the top, it looks like rocks. Like yeah. you wouldn't even know. Yeah. And, but then you're, you're going down and there's these beautiful archways, you know, as you wind your way down into the ground and very it is, wet, uh, very wet and muddy and slippery. So again, like you need good shoes just to walk around everywhere in Sintra, but definitely something that is kind of slip resistant, slip resistant. Um, and that'll hang on amazing. to the kids too because the edge as you're walking down is not that high no. um so and it's tight so people i was always worried someone's going to bump into me and i'm going to ah, you know um so yeah. i would always keep kids on the inside and keep you know holding which is going to be hard because you know they're going to yes. want to like look over the yeah. ends because it's like you know you're looking down or straight down to yeah. the bottom so it's not good if you're scared of heights sorry, but, <laughs> um but it, once you're down there then you go through like this little tunnel like a grotto yeah yeah it feels very much like a grotto and yeah. then you come out under the waterfall and you get to then walk on those little stepping stones that can yeah. you know, through the pond. So, and there's so many other things like we didn't get to like, Oh, like the yeah. Eastern grotto and you know, oh, there's so many more. Yeah, I would, I, I, it's definitely one of those things like, uh, we decided we, so we left not too late in the morning, uh, but we did not have enough time to do what we wanted to do. And so definitely consider if you want to hit all three of the major things then I would say definitely consider doing, um, an overnight there. Yeah, so I would do, like, either leave early in the morning and plan on probably not leaving to come back until, like, 5 or 6, or yeah. if you do one overnight and you have, like, a day and a half, because then you could do um, the Penna Palace and the the Morsh regular Palace. area and the, the Moorish Castle, and then there were some other things to see, too. Yeah. So that would give you a good amount of time. Yeah. yeah. So after that, so Sintra, we came back to Lisbon that day. So we've had some great, uh, we learned that rooftop bars are huge in Lisbon, mm -hmm. right? And so at the Tivoli, they have a rooftop bar and a great, uh, definitely a sky bar. Right? Sky bar. Yeah. And um, they also, with a beautiful view, looking out over to the river and the, you know, orange terracotta rooftops. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. And you can see kind of hills on both sides. So it's really beautiful. And we had dinner at their, um, you know, fine dining restaurant mm -hmm. and, so it was great. It was, you know, a very central location that allowed us to kind of walk down the main avenue into kind of definitely the tourism district. Yeah. Of, but it's not like this wide avenue that's yeah. like in the middle of the avenue are trees. So it's, it's like being on a park. So I think, again, families with little kids, they do have a pool, which yeah. is in the summer is open. And it's also, um, you know, somewhat shaded. And so it, yeah. it has like a nice peaceful feel to it. Yeah. Whereas where we're staying now is a little more like in the center. Yeah. Like when you want to really walk out and explore and have restaurants like right there. Right. Yeah. Um, so maybe we should talk about actually today, like stay on Lisbon and then sure. maybe chat about yeah. Cash or yeah. Cash cash. Cash cash. <laughs> we can't get it right. Oh. Um, yeah. So we, so that was our one experience in Lisbon and now we're also, so we're seeing the Martin Hall Chiado. Uh, family suites and this is truly um, Martin Hall is made for families so everything is designed to make it easy for families especially families of young kids mm -hmm. uh, definitely yeah, like young like babies toddlers school age, school age. perfect yes perfect. yeah a great kids club like in-house with kids staff so adults have no issues if you want to drop your kid off for a while and go wander the city by yourselves or if you want to have a nice lunch together or whatever. And they have pajama time they too. Have pajama. Yeah. So at night, I think it's open till like 10 or 11. Yeah. Uh, you just have to make arrangements, but you can bring your children there, go out and have a nice dinner and they'll feed your kid dinner, yeah. play movies, like whatever. Um, and I just, 
And there's also like in addition to the kids club, there's a play area that families can just go and enjoy. Yeah. So it's, you know, if you just want your kids to have time to play, there's like a little ball pit and there's toys. Yeah. And there's a little kind of inner sanctuary for little babies with yeah. like a pack and play. Or like crawlers and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And it's yeah. kind of like if you imagine you have like maybe an older kid who's still sleeping, you got that baby who's waking you up at five or 6 a.m., right? You can, right. it hasn't adjusted right. the jet lag or one parent's trying to get a little more sleep while the jet yeah. lag kid doesn't adapt. You can kind of go in there and, and it was, it, to me, it reminded me of like having a gymboree in the Yeah, in the yeah it did feel like a gymboree. Yeah, that's yeah. very spot on. And it's a very different feel from the other Martin Hall property, which we'll mention. But yeah, so in a city, if you are with young kids in a city, like this is definitely the place you want to be. Oh, and they have, and we said that they're suites, they're yeah. apartments, really. Yeah, they're kids in a suite, true. which is, you know, a really large, very large suite. And this, but it still has a full kitchen and place yeah. to eat and everything, right? Yep. Yeah. So I have like a studio suite. And so mine actually is one of the larger ones for sleeping though, because it has enough yeah. floor space that it, you can bring in a crib or even a rollaway bed. So you can fit like five kids. Uh, and it's, so it's got like the Murphy bed bunk beds that are in the walls yeah. and then a king bed right over there. I'm very tempted to show them to oh, you. Oh, we but, should. Uh, Do you want me to like move it over there? I'll slide. Okay. You. She's going to pop them out while I keep All talking right. about my room. So, but in these apartments, it used to actually be an apartment building and Martin Hall took over the apartments and, uh, created it as a hotel for guests. And there's 37 room types. And we talked and, um, some of them actually are. Uh, I think somebody's in a two bedroom. Uh, Tamara has a one bedroom, so she has like this. We could we could try and give people actually a little tour. I'm going to stand up, so this is going to be shaky because we're on our laptop. But I'm, let's give them a little tour yeah, of sure. your suite. So here's the Murphy beds that she just pulled down. You can kind of see those now. Oh, wrong way. There we go. So those are great, like nice room. Chair next you see it. a built-in high chair, and then we'll come over here. I'm trying to remember, so I feel like I'm tilting the wrong way. Sorry, you guys. So it's got a full kitchen with a dining table that sleep that sits four. It has a dishwasher, an oven, a microwave, and I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, a wash and dry wash, and it's a wash, wash and dry. dry. So yeah, that's really great. And then full size refrigerator as well. And they stock you with uh, water, orange juice, milk, and cookies to start. Yeah, like and one one set. Yeah, you could, if you re, if you need to replenish it, then they will charge you. But at least that is complimentary. Yeah. And one of the things that I love, I discovered this morning, is they even have little kid utensils. Oh, look at how cute those are! So it's like everything is so thoughtful, and yeah, if definitely you can around, you can also see everybody's coming even, for a walk with us. Sorry, yeah, even the table doesn't have any sharp edges like everything has rounded edges yeah it's like a rounded edge ottoman and so it's just so so family friendly and they can deliver breakfast to your room or you can go downstairs to the cafe and have breakfast there. and is all of it bed and breakfast like all of it includes breakfast i don't think so okay i was trying to remember that yeah I'm i not, couldn't recall check on that. but also tamara has like a great like lights because she's on so she's on i'll show you out this one she's on kind of the sleepy street um, you guys can kind of see. So this is the sleepy street side. I apologize if it's wonky. Um, but look at this view. This is what I think is so exciting. Sorry again. We're the, uh, oh yeah. I'm going to flip up the, so here she is. Watch how easy it is to just pop those up. So that's what they look like. Those are the Murphy beds that pop out, but let's look over here. I'm going to slide by this lamp. Sorry. Okay, so I'm on my laptop, but you can see there. So she's got the river view, and you can see they have a replica of the, uh, Christ, the Redeemer. Christ the Redeemer that's in uh, Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro, that's you can kind of see that over there. So there you go. There was our little like spin. So that's our one bedroom little. Yeah. So that's the living room, and then of course she's got a bathroom and bedroom that's over in that part of the. Thing, but anyways, that gives you a little feel for these. So definitely family friendly hotels are, I mean, yeah, so family friendly, but really right outside. You can walk to restaurants, yeah. and, you know, sightseeing, not far to a tram stop, not far to a train station. Yeah. The train station is right down yeah. there and it's, it truly is in the heart of the city. I mean, even more so with, 
you know, really the local city. So lots of tiny streets and again, hills. Uh, but we've been able to walk around so much and mm -hmm. grab Ubers. And just today we decided to go to lunch and we just walked up the street and found this charming little, um, I mean, it had a name, but you wouldn't know the name. You just <laughs> kind of a hole in the wall place. It was a local, yeah. local restaurant. Didn't I was just going to say, <laughs> didn't accept credit cards. So there's a heads up. If you don't eat at a major restaurant, you might not. Yeah. Know. Well, and also not many places take American Express. Yeah, I have noticed there have been no's on American Express. A few places are do, though, but it's not. Yeah, but just, but I, you know, I've been turned down twice with my American Express, which thankfully I have a visa as well. Yeah, so it's not always problem. travel with a backup card. Yeah. Here. I mean, it's always good to do it no matter what cards you hold, but I always. Yeah. Oh, and it, a heads up on that. It's funny because we, this trip kind of happened fast. I did not call either of those cards. Mm -hmm. I used to always say, call your credit cards and let me know mm -hmm. you're traveling. That used to be a major, major importance. It's true. I didn't call either. And both of them have approved my charges. No yeah. problem. My, so. my capital one has told me you don't have to call anymore because it's travel card, whatever. But yeah. with my other one that I, the one that I actually brought, yeah, I usually do call my same thing. Yeah. Like we kind of, we got our tickets like the day before. We left, yeah. So, yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah. We haven't done a lot of planning. So we kind of yeah. been learning as we've gone. That's why we're sharing all the tips from any mistakes. Yeah. That we made, <laughs> you know, but yeah. so we, uh, we got into town yesterday and we walked around. We're not far from a nice overlook. There's the nice thing about being on hills is there's so many overlooks so around many. the city. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we did that. We walked past a couple of other kind of sites to see, you know, like the, um, the elevator. And then we went what to the this. Place? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. It is hilarious. We found this like touristy shop, but of all the things like, Portuguese sardines are kind of a known thing. Yeah, it's a major yeah. part, like in their artwork, and you'll find in like crafts and everything. Sardines are a big part of their commercialization and their economy, I guess, or it used to be. Uh, and so we found this little shop on the main avenue in the tourism district, of course. It's kind of like world of sardines. Yeah, fabulous world. Fabulous world. Yeah, or something like that. And um, it had a circus theme, and on the wall are all these cans of sardine, and we thought, what is that? Turns out they're just packaged sardines that all have an individual year on them. Yeah. So there's so basically it's a great gimmick for you know to buy as a souvenir yeah. for someone. Um, but they're you know they have all the different years and they will say some major news event or someone that was born that year or something. Yeah. It's always like, like a major news. Yeah. yeah. News event and who who you share your birthday with on yeah. each hand. So it was cool. Fun. It was yeah. fun and it was it was yeah it was just like such a Clever idea. Yeah. Um, cool marketing. But yeah, we, and then we went to the timeout market. Yeah, which everyone was talking about. So we went and checked it out. But oh my. I love going to food markets. Um, <laughs> so there are, you know, there are a couple types of food markets, right? There's the market where you actually go to buy stuff to bring home and cook. Right. And then there's the market yeah, like, where you go to enjoy the food that's being created. Yeah, there, like right? public market. Yeah, it's kind of changing, right? Like a restaurant almost like a food court. Yeah. But yeah. it's trendy. It's more food it's a food hall. A food hall. Market, I guess, yeah. Right? It's, yeah. yeah. Like it's not. Hall. Although there was markets. So in the center area was the food hall and around it was kind of um, the market stalls and they were selling like handcrafted goods yeah. and um, some seemed a little tourist tchotchke. Mm -hmm. But um, I, we all found one little place that was all Portuguese made artisans. And so I bought a couple of things of soap and somebody bought some Christmas ornaments that were like tin ornaments. I'm giving away your souvenirs. I know. I'm not watching. It's good. I know. I was like, I don't think my girls are watching. <laughs> so, yeah, so it was good, but it, but definitely really, really crowded. So if you're going to go crowded. on the week on Saturday night, it was jammed. So we would have loved and it was to, rainy to get, yeah. <laughs> we would have loved to get a bottle of wine and sit at, they basically have like high top counters. And yeah. Tables. Like non ending high yeah. top picnic tables. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah, communal dining. Yeah, yeah, communal dining. That's the word. Yeah. And, you know, there's all kinds of different stalls from, like, Asian noodles to traditional um, ham. Yeah, and I saw sushi. Food. Yeah. Octopus hot dog. There was an octopus <laughs> hot dog. No, no joke. And then, of course, the famous... Oh, um, um, the pest pest uh, de nata. Yeah, yeah. just the custard tarts. I'm going like this. I know, like everyone totally knows what we're doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the custard tarts that are really famous in Lisbon. And so the one in the food hall is one of the more famous ones. You'll find them everywhere. It was originated in the kind of suburb of Bolnam, which we yeah. got one so from today. today. Um, but we tried this other one yesterday and um, they were yummy. And actually, I thought for sure it would be yeah. because it's such a 
known tourist thing. I thought they would be charging like four dollars a chart. Yeah, and uh, they were only one euro. So one I, euro piece. yeah, I mean, yeah, and you, just, buy, you can buy six, but you don't get a discount. <laughs> yeah, so uh, six euro. Just so. one of those things where you expect them to really, you know, inflate it. Yeah, so. I guess they they maybe hit the ceiling. They know what people pay because they'll just go down the street and get the one yeah, for the, yes. one euro because it's a very yeah. common thing here. That's so true. today, speaking of Lem. That was what we did today was we took a day trip to Blen, uh, which is we ended up we everyone was saying, oh, you can take the tram and the trams are packed and mm-hmm. the buses are packed. So I don't know how much of a money saving. You can take the train too. You can take the train, train like two stops. Yeah, there's a couple of ways to get there on public transit. However, there is an ease that comes from calling up an Uber. <laughs> and that was, credit card yeah, and, yeah, yeah, sure. yep, exactly. So I, my, the Uber trip we got for our return, um, was 750 euro. So if so, you have a family, by the time you buy your public tram kind of tickets, yeah. you're, you're better off probably with the Uber. Um, it's shorter, shorter wait lines. Definitely. definitely. Oh, gosh, we were yeah. looking at the pickup point when we were in Belém to come back. It was a huge long line at the transit stop. Yeah. yeah. And it's a shorter trip, too, because when I timed it out, it was going to be half hour to do the train at the tram. Yeah, 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Right. And so. it is a straight shot right along the water, right yeah. along the river. So, And what you're going to say what's there? Like, why do you go out Yeah, there? that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so the whole reason we were going to Blem, there's a few. It's definitely a tourism district, Yeah, in all honesty. Yeah. So there's a couple of big things. The big, like, one of them is there's a major monastery, the Geronimos mm-hmm. Monastery, uh, and then there's also the a major sculpture called the Discoveries, the Monument of Discoveries, I think. And it basically is a monument celebrating the the commission or charge of the Portuguese explorers who left to go to the New Americas mm-hmm. or to discover around the world via boat. Mm-hmm. And then um, there's also this big thing called the Belém Tower, which we didn't wait in the big long line, so I don't even know the history of the Blem Tower. Yeah. Is. Both the Discoveries Monument and the Blem Tower, you could buy a ticket and go up to the top for viewpoints. Right. And from there, you can see the Vasco da Gama Bridge, which looks like um, it looks the like the Golden Gate Bridge. Bridge. It's and exactly you also like see the the replica of the Christ the Christ Redeemer, the Redeemer. just showed you out the window. Uh, so it's you know you can do those things. The lines are really long. Again, we're we're here. We were doing it on a weekend. Um, I don't, we couldn't quite figure out if there are more crowds than usual because you yeah. wouldn't think the end of April would be high yeah, in that season. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely shoulder season, but you know, they usually, they said like May through September is the highest. Uh, but it was very, very crowded. Very and so you didn't wait in line to go up to no. the top. And there was a national holiday on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was telling Tamara, I was like, I don't know if people took a long weekend to like, but it just, it's there was also like a marathon or something which seemed to end right there. So like yeah, you know, either people were waiting for their you know loved one to finish. I think the race, race was done the by then, or the race was done. And they decided to stay there and do right. some tourism. Be some, but the lines were so long, so we learned. So the monastery was our first stop, and we um, thankfully had Tamara had a great helpful person on her Instagram. I need to look up who that was. Yeah, yeah. we can give them a shout out. Uh, and they said, hey, there will be a really long line at the monastery. Don't wait in that line. Instead, go into the Museum of Archaeology, and you can buy a ticket there for the monastery. So we're like, okay, we kind of trusted this person. You know, it's kind of one of those, that's how the community works, right? So we waited in this not as long line. It ended up taking us 35 to 40 minutes because we actually timed it uh, to get through the line we waited in. And I would say the other line was at least three times longer. So do the math, and that's how much you would wait if you were waiting in the monastery line. And uh, so we got a ticket, and sure enough, you could buy a ticket to the monastery at the archaeology museum for 10 euro, or you could buy a combo ticket for 12 euro. So um, I don't necessarily – we went to the archaeology museum. It was cool. They have some beautiful – um, artifacts that they've shown off and then there was another section like the, in their temporary exhibit and then there was another section we were running out of time so we decided not to go to it so it's up to you whether you want to throw in that extra two euro just know that it is an option to buy there and um, when we when we came back out of the monastery to go into the archaeology museum the archaeology line was definitely longer however you still I mean the lines go 
you know, they run parallel and then the, the, the archaeology turns off while the other one continues for a lot longer and then it turns off. So, of course, the one that turns off first is shorter. And so I want to give a shout out to Robin from Rouse. It's 10 o'clock. Hopefully that didn't. Sorry. <laughs> it's That's 10 o'clock. <laughs> um, Sorry. From, from in the Pacific, in the Northwest. <laughs> I, from Rouse 101. So R-O-U-S-E 101 is her Instagram handle. And thank you so much, Robin, um, for giving me that tip about the Geronimos um, Monastery. It looks like she was maybe she was there, there back in April. Yeah, yeah. in April. Huge help. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. I think you saved us at least. I mean, I, I think it was at least an hour and a half to two hours of time. And so. you, and it looks like she was also, she's in Venice and she was here. So they're having yes. a family gap here. So go ahead and follow her. Yeah. And uh, so that was one thing we did. And then we went over and walked. So thankfully everything else was it's definitely long walking distance, but we were, we crossed through and there's yes. this gorgeous garden. Now, here's a trick. The fountains in Portugal, we cannot figure out. They run at weird times. It seems like whenever it's raining and we don't want to take photos, they're running. Yeah. And then when it's sunny and we want to take the photos, they're not running. But our tech tip driver said that there's a, a problem with the fountains in Lisbon or there's with a problem the with the water. water. So they, yeah, so like maybe there's a drought or something, but yet... Um, they seem to come on when it rains. So I don't know. <laughs> we haven't figured it, it out. Must be the timing and those things just happen to overlap. But anyway, we thought it was the timing, but I don't know. It was like the middle of the day today, and it was yeah. on while we were going into the monastery at eleven o'clock, and then we came out at yeah. twelve thirty, and it wasn't on. So, anyways, uh, there's a beautiful garden right across from the monastery that you should definitely wander through. Mm -hmm. And that you can wander through. You use like a little down stair, almost like a subway stair, to pass under the busy road. To yeah, come to be able to go um, over to the monument of the discoveries, yeah. which again, if you don't, if you don't care about having the view, then just take a cool picture. It's yeah, beautifully it's, done. It's, like, it's, it's a really, a really cool beautiful monument. monument. Yeah. And then we walked along the water for a while and then had to come back a little bit, but um, walked down to the Blum Tower. Mm -hmm. so. so it's definitely a good. It's a good full day. There are a lot of other museums to do, so uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't treat it as a half day. Yeah, yeah spending a whole day out there. Yeah, full full hours. And a tri tip, if you have a lot of you. Um, so our friend, while we were waiting in line to get our ticket for the monastery, she ran over to the, the famous Pastoris de Belém, right? Pastiche. Pastiche. Pastiche de Belém. Yeah, I guess that would be more like Pastiche, right? Pastiche de Belém. But it's where the little custard tarts supposedly were originated. And supposedly there's only like two people who know the recipe. Yeah. And they, they have very limited. They come in at certain hours and... Um, so it's, it's supposedly the original, it's the place to go very, very long lines. And the other tip that we got yes. for that is that if there's a long line on the outside, you can actually bypass that line for the takeout and go inside and sit down where I guess you might pay a little bit more to have the table service, but that line might be faster. But I've also heard someone else in my Instagram said that, uh, it, the line was actually longer for them to sit down than it was outside. Yeah. So you just got to, you know, play it by ear. She waited about 15 minutes, 15 for an to 20 line. minutes for an outside line. And she said the line was fairly long, but it's a well-oiled machine. There's three lines actually. And she said two of them are for people just yeah, looking for a take, take out, yeah. um, grab and go. And then one of them is for the people waiting for a line inside. So I think that whole like go inside tip has actually gotten out there a little bit. Yeah. And I think it's, it's now it's still on the regular. Yeah, it yeah. depends. You can, you can see which one yeah. works better. Yeah. And it's in a very busy touristy road. That's kind of crazy. However, there's a Starbucks and by the McDonald's across the road, there was a free like public Wi-Fi. So there's another tip. Let's talk Just about how we found our Uber. Yeah, that's how we had to order our Uber because we um, didn't want to spend with our cell phone plans, you know, look into it because you might sign up in advance or have to opt into it. But like if you want to use your cell plan overseas, you can pay $10 a day for AT&T and Verizon. And then you can have access to your data plan on that day internationally. Yeah. So it's not like you... It's you nothing know, by extra data. You're using yeah. your original data, so that's something to know. Yeah, but it, we were, we didn't need it otherwise, so I didn't want to pay the extra yeah. ten dollars if we didn't need to. And usually, you know, Starbucks or different places will have free Wi-Fi. Sometimes uh, tourist attractions like they have free yeah. Wi-Fi. It's in Centro, right? Um, yeah, Centro I think had some free Wi-Fi. We picked up somewhere or the yeah. hotel, maybe I can't recall. But you can definitely like occasionally find it. But the monastery did not have Wi-Fi. No, and the discovery being an outdoor statue, they didn't have Wi-Fi. So no. you never know. But just be aware of that. Yeah, when you're thinking about using Ubers, you have to have cell service or Wi-Fi. 
So that's kind of our time in Lisbon, yeah. but we have one more thing if you're listening this long or watching this long, <laughs> <laughs> um, which was our time in Kashkesh, which is, as you said, a seaside town about 35 minutes yep. outside of Lisbon. So again, it's a nice pairing. The way I like to do it is I like to jump right in and explore a city and tire ourselves out with, you know, lots of walking up hills and tours and all that kind of stuff, and then go have a couple days to relax at the end of a trip. So I actually think if you were only able to get to the Lisbon area of yeah. Portugal, like personally, I would do probably four to five days in Lisbon. Yeah. Maybe like, you know, maybe three or four and one night in Sintra if you could do that. But otherwise you can do Sintra as a day trip and then yeah. then do two or three out in Kashkesh and that way you'll you'll finish with a relaxation portion of it. But yeah, you, you know, you can do it whatever way you want, but you can really fit uh, a trip to Lisbon and the area in to a nice week. You know, yeah, definitely. Sure. Absolutely. And it is good to note that, I mean, these are the tourism areas. So, um, you know, I had someone comment and they said, you know, like Lisbon and Kashkesh and Sintra, those are all real tourism districts. And I agree with that. Yeah, I would say absolutely. So it is something to know, like we're in no way saying this is Portugal. And I just, you know, want to make sure that I'm sure if you want more of an authentic oh, yeah. Portuguese experience, then you should I mean, you know, I would look love beyond these cities like Belém today. I told Tamara, I said, yeah, it's it's totally for tourists. Yeah. So, I mean, I would love to come back and do like the Douro, like the yeah. Madrid and Porto. And then go, and down, then the, go down to the Algarve, which is yeah. like in the south, the beach where they have these fishing villages and beautiful coastline. You see pictures of like the caves and the, oh, you know, that would be gorgeous. gorgeous, gorgeous yeah. So the, and then there's also like the Alan Tejo or something like that region where there's like winemaking and yeah stuff too, so, so just know there's definitely like if you're looking for the the Lisbon and you're looking for that like the popular areas of Portugal this is great and I agree like three to five days um for the city because it'll start to feel especially if you have kids in tow it's everything's going to start to feel the same I think in a way yeah. it's not but I mean you're going to go to only so many lookouts you're going to see so many yeah. um things of tile and the like hilly streets and stuff. So definitely that, but I think Kashkesh is a great place to escape. If you want kind of that more resort, it almost has like a very California beachy vibe feel. Yeah, I thought like the that town, you know, yeah, not like, like a beach resort where there's, you know, lots of high rise hotels. No, it's just like a little seaside town with a little Marina, a couple of little beaches and some restaurants and shops yeah. and monuments and, yeah, there was a major like fortress there. I don't know what the yeah, story with that is. And there's right. actually beaches there. They're public beaches. And um, like we have a tip, you'll have to look at one of our posts because we'll list the beach that was recommended to us eventually. We'll link to it eventually in yeah. the show notes. But um, you can like from the Martin Hall uh, cash key, you can rent bikes. Like we said, it was 25 euros. We got e-bikes. Huge savior, uh, especially after you had a glass of sangria and it starts <laughs> the end of the day. Um, because coming back was hilly and there was a headwind. Mm -hmm. So um, the e-bike was Well, really you said nice. also there's a bike path along most of the coast, but as you get into town, then you're on town streets. You are on town streets. Little, yeah, little and there, they didn't offer adult helmets, um, which is very common mm. anytime I've yeah. rented bikes. Uh, but there were kids' helmets there, and I'm sure they would have had adult helmets if you wanted them. But right. just beware. Um, if you have to remember it because you don't want to get out on the bike and then remember it. So, and I would say, so just to share a little bit about the Martin hall yeah. uh, in Kashkesh, this, I have real, I was so blown away because I've just never seen a resort that was so well thought out in how they cater to kids. And, and again, young kids from babies through school age, yeah. um, you know, I'm not to say that older kids wouldn't enjoy it, but like really that sweet spot, it would be, you know, through school age. And it's just yeah. everywhere you look, there's something for kids and every detail has been thought about, but yet it still is stylish and yeah, very calm. It's not Disneyland. No, no. And it's not even what you would say like, Oh, it's a family friendly hotel. Like it's not Nickelodeon. No, it's not. It's not. It's very um, upscale, very bright and open space. Mm -hmm. But the, even like the seating concept, it wasn't, you know, you go into a hotel and it's like twos and twos and twos. So for a family, no, this had like a whole row of like, you know, family style seating. Right. Like, and like big pit big seating. Big pit or, seating. Or and, yeah. 
And then even the restaurant has a, a kids play area. So if you're eating and supervised, you know, too. supervised, yeah, they'll have a kids club member there. So you know how this goes. All of us have been there. Your kid eats in two seconds and you and your husband are still enjoying your, your wine or your plate of food and your kids like bouncing around. So they can go over to the supervised kid play in the restaurant. You don't even have to go check them into the kids club. Right. And, and also like, you walk into the restaurant and almost every table is already set up with a high chair. High chair. So it's like, you almost have to ask for them to take it away. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas it's like, usually it's like, do you have a high chair? And then you have to worry like how dirty is it? Like, yeah. no, they're out there like ready to be used. I mean, there is every room has a step stool like mm-hmm. at the sink uh, to wash their feet. And there's also a uh, little, little potty, the potties seat. and the potty seats. Mm-hmm. Like there's both things there. So, and they also mm-hmm. have, you know, all of their rooms sleep for, it yeah. depends on like what the configuration is, but it's, you know, it can be the king bed and with the same kind of bunk beds that we just showed you here, yeah. or it can be a couch that opens up to sleep to small children. Um, sometimes they might, in some rooms, they might also be able to fit a baby cot, but otherwise you would need um, That's the to only, do some larger. A villa. Yeah, a villa or um, two rooms. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the only way you can get five uh, at the Kashkish property, they said, was if you had a... Um, in the main hotel. In mm-hmm. the main hotel, if you had a baby cot, because otherwise they can't bring an extra um, bed in. However, in their villas, which they have 12 of, six of them have a... Um, six of them are for four. Six, six of them are for six. For six. Yeah, six are for four and six are for six. Yeah. And just and if you do have a larger family, their property down in Sagrish, which is in the Algarve, that actually had, I think, up to five bedroom villas. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I have to say that not knowing Martin Hall and it, I didn't totally get it, but yeah, the concept of how well they have done family travel, it is not just like, Oh sure. We're family friendly. You know, it's, it's not that at all. It's, um, they, they truly, but it's not also like we are just for kids. I don't know how to explain it, but it's just really well done. It's a family friendly hotel that welcomes families, makes them feel comfortable, but it's very, upscale yet relaxed yeah i mean just and that property definitely i mean my bedroom is gorgeous you can go to my my stuff suitcase um facebook page because i did a walkthrough of my room mm-hmm. like with a tour awesome. yeah. and um but beautiful like overview of the gardens and they have a kids club there so their kids club of course because it's more of a um, resort property they had a kids club in a separate building Mm -hmm. Uh, and they had like a separate baby area I guess this one has that too Mm -hmm. but they had a separate baby room Um, they do they had a separate pool so you can actually have your kids at cash case you can have your kids enrolled in like swimming lessons and swimming programs when they'll actually have a swim instructor and this pool is actually in like a bubble bubble. like greenhouse so that one's open year round and it's, it's quite warm in there um, they even had like squishy beanbag kind of things. Yeah. yeah. Like everything was just like soft and comfy. And they had an activity room in that kids club. They, they do like do, cooking lessons. Yeah. Like all kinds of you know, art, cooking, things yeah. like that. And it's also, they, they have it open in a couple of sections. So there's drop off times and then there's free play time. Yeah. So for families just to come in and, and use the facility to, to play. So uh, for kids like mine that don't always really want to get dropped off or yeah. they're just feeling shy about it. It's a way to introduce them to the space and the staff, and then maybe they'll try going back on their own yeah. another time, which yeah. I really like. I think that's good. And what about their in bars? So they have a restaurant um, on site. There they have like a, you know, kind of a fine dining, but that's where everyone gets their breakfast. But they also have this in bar restaurant that's their lunch bar, and they have it um, here as well in their uh, Chiado, uh property. And it's so family friendly, but so well done with really good food. But each, like when we were in the cash cash, the menu, there was a whole baby food baby section. Food. Like not a kid's not like menu. Kids menu. Like, like literally like pure pure baby baby food. I couldn't believe it. And so there was a baby food section. There's like drink pairings with each dish that are not yeah. alcoholic. All there's of mocktails. Their bars, like all of the restaurants and bars in that property have some kind of mocktail. Some kind of mocktail. Yeah like smoothie or drink for kids. So when mom and dad are having a, a special drink, kids can kids have a special drink, drink yeah. too. And then the menu, instead of it being a kid's menu section, anything that was on the menu, there was a kid size and an adult yeah. size. Yeah. And I love that because it's not like, oh, this is your section you get to choose from. And it right. also doesn't like, just you can get chicken fingers or mac and cheese. And like it's, you can get anything they want. Did you notice too that there was like a hand washing station, like a very low, like with a beautiful sink yeah. hand washing station for kids? 
So I, it's just like every, like literally little, everything, little thoughts. They but just, also we yeah. should tell about like all the different, um, the playgrounds. And yeah. Like that. So like out there's, there's a large pool that's closed, um, except in the summer, there's a pool in the spa and the spa is another thing. It's like the oh, pool in the spa yeah. kids can use. It's open to all guests. It's open to all guests. Like families can go in there and the spa has like, you know, mother, daughter or father, son, or, you know, they have parent, child, Treatments. treatments. They also have tween and teen treatments. Yep. So it's but those are an extra fee. Yeah. Sure. The treatments cost money. However, the open, so what you would call a day spa, it's open to any guest. Yeah. So there's a, an indoor pool they can use there, which is heated. And then you can go out to an outdoor, which is not. Yeah. And they have a sauna, a, um, a jacuzzi, and they have these like sensation showers, mm. which I didn't get to try, but if you know what a sensation shower is, they have four of them there. And then in the area outside of the main restaurant, they have like a little caterpillar, a little yeah. house, like some like play, um, kind of like that um, play school, like and so house, like the play, yeah, little types, little types, types, yeah. Little types. No, and there's like, a play school one too, kind of like that stuff. But then over by the kids club, you actually have to use your card to get into the gate. Um, oh, but there's a, there's a soccer pitch, there's a basketball court. There was a trampoline, a, a floor, a trampoline, a ground trampoline. Yeah, like built into the ground trampoline. There was um, the, the like hang on, um, yeah, like a like little a, zip line kind of thing. Yeah, like a sit, like a disc. Zip yeah, line. there were a couple. There was a big jumping pillow. Yeah, there were a couple of playgrounds. One was for larger kids. One was definitely more like toddler preschool yeah. size. There was a ping, ping pong, pong table. table, and there was a pool table like in the lobby, in the yeah, lower yeah, lobby of the lobby. hotel too. Yeah, so like you can't possibly get bored. There are like games and books all around. Yeah. Too. And then they also have activities that you can look up. Like they have tons of tours that they can organize yeah. for you. Um, they have bike tours and then just driven tours for Sintra and all of those things that you can yeah. book straight with them. They also have um, like yoga classes that are welcome. And then the cool thing is they just, they welcome all ages everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I was in the, I went and had a spa treatment done actually a beautiful, like, Oh my goodness. So lovely seaweed mask of all things. But um, I was in there and this family was there and they had a little, probably she was probably like, I would guess like one and a half. And um, she had a little robe, like a Martin Hall so robe. Cute. And it was her size. Like it, was, it wasn't even like a long kid's robe because I see kids, robe, but it was like a baby robe. And it was adorable. So, yeah. Yeah. They, they just think of everything, but it's not done in a way like they've got movies playing in the lobby. No, no movies. Yeah. Yeah. The kids club, I didn't see any video games. No. It wasn't like one of those kids clubs where it's, you know, plop in front, plop of, in front of a movie. Or yeah. Plop, yeah, it was, it's very, you know, they want, they want families to make memories together. And the food too is like healthy, tasty, yeah. like, you know, really, I mean, I've just been very, very impressed. And I think like, and especially knowing, you know, Lisbon, especially on TAP or TAP, yep. you know, coming over direct flights, fairly affordable. It's not long. It's only like a six hour flight from, you know, different parts of the East Coast a little longer yeah. going back. But, you know, it really makes it easy to come even just for a week. You know, usually to come to Europe, you think, oh, you're going to want to be there for two weeks. But yeah. I feel like you can come. Oh, you could totally for come for a week. week. And uh, it just, it's such a good destination for families, especially with young kids. I feel like so many times it's hard to find resorts that are suitable for babies and toddlers. Yeah. You know? And I would say the only thing with that, like the resort's great for babies and toddlers, but yeah, there's definitely going to be that area where the, the city is hard to just yes. to explore yeah. with young kids. So just be aware of that. Like right. there is a little bit of a, so maybe you do want to stay out there and just do day trips. You know, yeah. Possibly, yeah. So. That's possible too. Yeah. But another thing I want to just finally mention perhaps, cause we, I mean, we've talked about our three hotels. So we have the Tivoli property and then the two Martin Hall, Martin Hall cash cash and Martin Hall Chiata. Kyoto. Um, and the final thing I wanted to mention is this trip came up on us really fast. So neither of us were able to do the like foreign language research we would normally do, like with Duolingo or was that a stone or wherever we get that information. English is widely spoken here. I mean, I, we have, I haven't had any issues communicating. No. So do not let the fear of Portuguese or not not speaking the language, um, make you not want to come again, visiting the city, the tourism areas, of course, of Lisbon, Qashqai, right. Sintra, those are all, um, so English is so widely spoken. And you'll even see, you know, like Tamara had this example of two French, like a French couple came in and, you know, like the, the hotel employee just started speaking English because the French, guy, it's just, it's the language that Europeans all have in common. 
So it, it's very easy to communicate here. So that's one yeah. final thing I've mentioned. I mean, I've definitely fallen in love with Portugal. I would love to come back with the family. Not that I didn't love it here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, get to explore some of those other areas too. Um, so I'm, I'm yeah, really glad. And thank you to Martin Alf and to Tap for being yeah. us here. Yeah, thank you, Martin. And to the Tivoli for hosting us as well. Yeah, I, our hotel property. I mean, it's been an absolute delight. Yeah. Everywhere we've stayed has been amazing. And each for different reasons. So more details will be coming soon on Stuff Suitcase and We Three Travel yeah. as we write it all up. Yeah. So thanks for those of you who've joined us and who are joining us now to watch in. And I hope you will enjoy listening to all these tips. And if you have been to Portugal and you, you know, have some tips that you want to add yeah. or just some places that maybe we should plan on for a return trip, then let us know. Let us know. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.